Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Penn, and welcome to Green Views, a talk show about green issues and green solutions, in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. What exactly is clean technology, also known as clean tech? To answer this important question, I've invited Edward Schneider into the studio. He is a partner in a venture capital firm called Spirit Ventures. Edward Schneider, welcome to Greenviews. Glad to be here, Laura. Let's get things started. What exactly is clean tech? Well, clean tech is any uh, energy technology that doesn't pollute the environment. So that could be wind power, it could be solar power, it could even be water hydraulic power. But the key that I'd like to focus on today is solar energy. Okay, and what is a, a key driver to enable solar energy to eventually replace dirtier forms of energy like oil and coal? Hmm. If I could put it in one word, it would be cost. We have to make the cost as low as possible for them to compete with fossil fuel energies which are naturally very cheap. And the two drivers to making low cost solar energy or low cost per watt is energy conversion efficiency, which is how efficient we are at taking sunlight and converting a percentage of that sunlight into energy. And the second factor is production costs. The lower the production costs, obviously, the lower the cost will be to produce the solar energy. Yeah, that makes sense. And solar energy has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we there yet? Well, actually, it's been around for a while, but on a relative basis, it's really a young industry. It's been around for maybe two decades in full force. And that's young compared to, say, its semiconductor brethren, which has been around for, for 50 years or more. So the, the, um, the economies of scale and the, and the volume production isn't quite high enough to get the cost as low as, say, the semiconductor industry. Uh, the second factor that sort of held back solar energy has been over the last seven or eight years, we've been in a down cycle where we've had an oversupply or overcapacity of solar production. And this has given less of an incentive for people to invest to, uh, make, to make solar energy even more efficient. What are some examples of some leading technologies in solar technologies which might just get us there? Okay, there's two companies that come to mind that have technologies that I think could help get us there. One is a company in Germany called Mans AG, and the other is a company in Sweden called Sol Voltaics AB. Um, Mans is a leading company in low production thin film SIGS technology. And now that supply and demand are now finally starting to get back in balance, Mans helps enable large float glass production facilities of thin film technology um, solar panels. What is that? So a thin film, if you could picture a large plate of glass with a plastic-like enamel coating over it that is photovoltaic, that can really grab light and convert it to energy, that is what a thin film is. And the key that it makes it low cost, it's a very small amount of material that gets evenly spread over this large three by three meter plate of glass. So you have low production for man's on one side, and then what I think is complementary to that is the nanowire technology from Sol Voltaics. So if you look at nanowire technology, these nanowires are vertically positioned as opposed to uh, of horizontal positioning. And this vertical positioning helps grab more energy and have higher energy conversion, which is the second part of getting low cost. So they have the best energy conversion efficiency of any of the technologies that I've seen. And what's interesting is if you integrate this technology with man's technology, together that could be a very interesting combination because SIGS based and the gallium arsenide that's used by, by Sol Voltaics are actually complementary. And the conversion efficiency using the Sol Voltaics technology increases thin film conversion efficiency from 16% to 27%. That's an almost doubling in conversion efficiency, yeah, which would really lower your, your, your total cost mm -hmm. per watt. Why isn't this being done yet? This sounds like the solution. Well, they need to get together, and we're just moving out of this down cycle. 
But I think in the next three to five years, these are the type of things that could really help make solar energy a very competitive alternative. Oh, that's very exciting. It feels like you're on the cusp of something. Yeah. What are your other predictions for the trends in clean technology or solar technology? Well, to be fair, right now it's still a tough time for solar because oil now is at $45 a barrel versus $100 a barrel a year or two ago. So that means that solar has to keep on getting more and more cost competitive to be able to compete with uh, fossil fuels, for mm -hmm. example. But I think this combination that I've talked about would be competitive with oil at any price. So I, I'm still optimistic about um, the three to five year time horizon for, for solar energy. Okay, wow, that's very interesting. And thank you for these valuable insights. And thank you for watching. This is Dr. Laura Penn with Green Views, a talk show about green issues and green solutions in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. Until next time.